Hi, everyone. Welcome to Where Are All the Women, our weekly stream where we find the women and present them to you so that you can't pretend to not see them anymore. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm here with Mary Lou Singleton, as always, um, and we're very, very excited to be joined by Saul Grover, who is fighting for Australian women to be women again. <laughs> Um, I, uh, before we get into things, anyone who is tuned in on YouTube, please like and subscribe. It helps support the shadow band channel. Maybe, maybe it does. It probably, it doesn't seem to do anything. Justin Trudeau has decided that my channel can't grow anymore. So for, it's been stagnant for the past three years in, in terms of subscribers, which is very mysterious. But anyway, like, and subscribe if you can, maybe he'll take it away. Um, and uh well, yeah what was that? what else do i need to say i never remember <laughs> my intro um mary lou singleton is of course a nurse practitioner and midwife um and her website is enchantedfamilymedicine.com um she knows what a woman is that's why she's here right i do <laughs> i do know what a woman is <laughs> unlike me midwives right now <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Um, and yeah, if anyone has any questions or comments, I got a few questions and comments on Patreon that we'll try to get to. So thanks for those. But if anyone during the chat has questions and comments that they would like us to see and address, please use the super chat. Um, okay. So Saul, so, uh, it's, I mean, even just talking about this case, I know that this isn't hilarious to you, so I don't want to be glib because I know that this is incredibly stressful and exhausting. And it's also incredibly important. Like, it's a really, really, really big deal. But on its face, do you know, see it in writing or talk about it, tickle versus giggle. And we see the photo of you looking badass. And then this photo of this, like, greasy giant man who is representing tickle. It's just With like it's... The stubble, the stubble in every picture. He's so big and nail and obvious. Yeah. It's like like living, breathing satire. <laughs> but that's probably not how you feel. How do you feel? <laughs> oh, I'm exhausted. Like, I'm still really tired. I sort of said to myself that I could have this week to just chill out and recover from last week because it's the stress. Like you don't realize how much you're just sitting there, like using so much energy clenching essentially um i feel i feel good in the sense that i know that i've like i've fought as hard as i can not saying that the fight is over by any stretch of the imagination and i know i'm going to have to potentially fight on more but for this portion of it i fought as hard as i can and i can sort of have a little relax at the moment I suppose you just sit there, like, even in the like really dark moments, and there has been times where I've really just lost it and been hysterical because what it is that does that to me is I just go like, I I'm just telling the truth. Men are not women. I did not know this person. I, I He can have a gender identity if he wants. That's really, that cannot, um, like override my material reality and like by extension everybody else's so I just go I know that I'm right I know that I'm talking the truth and and have reality on my side it's do I have the law on my side and I just go like the law is supposed to reflect reality I just it just so the magnitude of like just how ridiculous it is all last week I just kept sitting there going like it's a society how did we get here <laughs> You yeah, just go, right. we're in my wildest nightmare. Did I think like, you know, there are like, you know, really bad people that break laws and do really bad things, you know, whether it's like rape or murder or like, even if you're getting into some of the bit more obscure things like defamation or like actual discrimination of some description. But it's like when you create a, a space for females, it's not, it, it's not just, I would say it's not even discriminatory to not let a man in there. I don't think. No. It's not good for you. It's just not for you, like by the very definition of what it is. So 
yeah, you just, it's just crazy. It really is just crazy. That's, yeah, that's one of the things that I was thinking about today as I was like reading up on, I was trying to catch up on what was going on with the case. I know that we talked about the case, I think on the Feminist Current podcast, maybe like a year or two ago. Um, 18 months ago, it's a long time ago. When did this all start? Was it 2022 or 2021? Um, so, well, he went on the app in 2021. I would have kicked him off. I don't remember doing it, but that would have happened in 2021. I, um, he called and texted my phone in late 2021. Then I got the AHRC complaint in 2022. So in terms of this actually starting, it was January 20th, 2022. Okay. Um, and yeah, so for people who aren't totally familiar with it, I'll try to like briefly explain and then you correct me if I get anything wrong or fill in the blanks. But so you, you are the creator, you're the CEO of an app called Giggle, which is a female only app that essentially exists for women, uh, young women. Is there an age minimum to get on the app? It was just um, 16 plus. So technically, I mean, we kind of approached it like within the app at 18 plus, but on the app store on Google Play, it was 16 plus because if you did it from 18 plus, then it was you became, it, became, it was like a totally different thing to do. And so it was like, well, you can't, we, yeah, long, it's, it's sort of a complicated thing, but it was sort of, it was for adult human females. But 16 and up, you could go on in the sense of like, okay, you could be like leaving school and going to university and things like that. But that would be definitely the cutoff. Like it and wasn't like, for little kids or anything. Right. And like, you know, just for for women to network, to... Network. Yeah, it was, I mean, you could find, like, it was all different. It was sort of like, you know, you'd go onto the app and then they're all different places so like basically lots of different apps in one so you could go to lesbian dating you could go to like the female only twitter reddit style feed you could go to places where you would just connect like one-on-one -on -one exclusively for like emotional support you could go for like to find like informational accommodation for like like airbnb stuff for like traveling there was like yeah roommates um freelance work um we even had like a sort of social area where like you know things like you could find someone who wanted to they wanted a pen pal like we tried to think of any random like important thing but also then just some really random kind of cute cool things like that women might want to connect for and it was just basically that you could have a female only support network in the palm of your hand no matter where you were and this isn't how i would have described it when we were developing it because i didn't know any of this stuff and i think that female only spaces have only become more important in the mm. last five or so years but now when I look back on it, and I really can't sort of think of what I thought of then to now I'm sort of a prisoner of what I know at this point. Um, but we live half of our lives, if not more, online. And I just think that the natural evolution of female-only spaces is there'll be more and more of them online. Like the evolution is not that they're going to include men. Like that's just nonsense. If you even think, just say virtual reality, like metaverse, all that crap, if that does take off, like we've even we've already heard stories of like women's avatars being raped they're gonna to have to have female only spaces in the virtual reality any online space that includes men yeah. is full of porn <laughs> like that's the reality it is yeah. true yeah like yeah. what what you know like any social media app and any app that i can think of that's for men and women is gonna have porn on it in one way or another, whether like via DM or in your feed, like Instagram, Twitter, right. Facebook, dating mm -hmm. apps, TikTok, TikTok, mm -hmm. like Everything. Twitch and their hot tub streams that are on there. Like, yeah. Yeah. Like it, it, it's one of those things like I, I've explained this quite a few times to people, like whether online or in real life, it is actually kind of easy for male only spaces to form. Like they're kind of above the law or outside the law in that respect, because you just create a space that is so either intimidating or gross to women and we self exclude from it. So men can create their male only spaces um, pretty easily. Like male only gyms, for example, they don't have to go and get exemptions or whatever. They just have huge giant men in these very industrial, loud type environments. And women don't go near it. 
But the moment you put women only on something, which we have to go and ask for permission to do, men just can't wait to go into it. It's always been the way. Right. The thing I was thinking about, yeah, when I was reading up on this was I was like, why, why would Roxy Tickle, this man who appears to be what, in his late 50s? Do we know how old he is? I think in mid 50s, I think. Okay. Why, what would he want to do with this app? What would he be there for? What, what on this app would be of use to him? I can't, I don't, I never want to speculate what's in his mind, but I will say what I, I, what I, what I know is that he didn't make a single connection on the app. He didn't talk to a single woman on there. No, nothing. He didn't do anything on there. So he managed to actually get on the app and then how long was he on before you kicked him off? He got on, yeah, which, again, wasn't an event because we had, like, you know, so basically we to have an online-only space, we have, we were like, what's the gatekeeping? How do you create an online space? Because if it was just, we just said woman only and left it to the <laughs> the kindness of men to leave it alone. I just knew, even without knowing about gender stuff, I knew that that wasn't going to work. Like, I know men, enough bad men out there. Um and so it was my dad that discovered the software for it. It's AI. It's by a company called, the one that we used was by a company called Kairos, but there's lots of different ones. And it's just, just scans of, you take a selfie, it scans it, and it says male or female. It's just AI, which this is, when we were first doing the testing, that's in 2019, God, it's come in leaps and bounds from then. And like when stuff that we've put together for the platform to launch again in the future, um, it's almost completely different to how it was. But um, we had it set to 94% accuracy because we found that we'd done testing and then so basically no woman got denied unless it was like a really blurry selfie because it just couldn't see anything. Um, but some men would occasionally get on, but we would just remove them. And my reasoning for that, whether it's right or wrong, was I would rather have to remove a man then deny a woman. I just, because it was for women, I didn't want women to have to go through the experience of being denied. So we just tried to make it as much that that wouldn't happen. And then we'd just remove a man if he got on. So like Tickle getting on, not an event, like it one out of, let's just say, sometimes it, we could have, when, especially when we were being inundated with men trying to get on, sometimes it would be like thousands an hour. And it was working fine. It was like, they, they didn't get in. But every now and then one would slip through because it's technology, it's not perfect. Thousands of men an hour tried to violate women's boundaries with this. Yeah, app. absolutely. Yeah, like I mean, how I was brought into this gender ideology nonsense was because we were just doing beta testing for the app, and it hadn't we hadn't launched it. Yet. We never actually even got an opportunity to launch it like officially or properly. Um, the trans, what I now know to be trans activists, found it on the App Store and Google Play and inundated it with one star reviews. Um, so put us into an algorithmic black hole. They called it, you know, transfer. They called, they said turf everywhere. I'd never heard the word before. Then they, um, and like, Welcome. We, <laughs> then they, 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 because we didn't have all the security features in, because we were just doing testing of all that stuff, he, they like created profiles saying like kill turfs and rape turfs. So I was introduced to gender slash trans ideology with seeing exactly what they're like. So it was very clear to me up front that there was a problem and that these people like were not welcome in a female only space. Like this was not woman behavior. I don't know if they were, they themselves had trans identities or they were just like stupid men activists. I have no idea. I don't, and it's irrelevant. I don't care. Um, so yeah, so like it was just, we had like, yeah, the, the gatekeeping all there and it, it worked like exactly as well as it should and then the good old-fashioned human eye was the backup which worked even better um and yeah I would have removed him I don't even remember doing it I, I removed many men and I don't I don't know any of them how did he get your contact information right so he called you and texted you yeah so the claim that's the creepy claim, yeah. Mm -hmm. My answer to that is actually, I don't know. I, I I know what's being claimed, but I don't agree with it. And I don't know. I don't know how he got it. Um, it's creepy either way. I, I was I was so creeped out because when it happened, like I've never spoken to him on the phone. I don't actually answer calls from numbers I don't know. Um, mm -hmm. I never have. I don't, maybe I've lost opportunities in my life from doing that. I don't know, but I just, I don't answer calls. 
unless it's like my mom, I suppose. No, I mean, and, yeah, because I'm always like, like, email or text me. But so he he did, I don't know if the, he text first or called first, I have no recollection, but he, I got, I remember getting the text and because the only like anchor of a user to the app was the phone number. So I could just type the phone number into the Google server. And that's when like, I, that's the first time I remember seeing his face. And I was just like, well, that's a man. And I called my dad and said, a man um, has, who is blocked from Giggle has called and text my phone. Like my dad was also like, this is not cool. Mm -hmm. And he said, block his phone number and don't tell your mom. And that's exactly what I did. So I actually just tried to block it out of my mind when that happened because it really freaked me out on that day. I remember being like really on edge. And then I just tried to pretend it didn't happen. And then I think it was like two and a half months later, I got the AHRC complaint, the Australian Human Rights Commission complaint. Yeah, I mean, I feel like that would be the normal response of most women is just like block, ignore, move on, partly because we've all had to deal with so many things like that, you know, whether yeah. it's like creeps in your DMs mm -hmm. or whatever, unwanted contact from all sorts of yeah. men, yeah, and it's not like a huge deal, like it's not like an unfamiliar thing, and like it's you don't want to get into a bunch of drama and stress over it, so just it's like, eh, move on. Mm -hmm. Well, I know. Um, uh, it just on that, like I actually not long ago looked at my blocked or well, my blocked phone numbers and contacts on my phone. They're all men. Some of them are like Matt Tinder, and I'm like, oh God, yeah, I remember him. <laughs> I blocked some women before that I didn't. <laughs> but he continued to harass you through other channels, did he, for sending you messages? Um, well, no, so he. No, what he, what has happened throughout this entire process is like while like the AHRC complaint was going on and then the federal court case. So I've had this person blocked since before I even knew him because I block all any trans activist who comments on me, especially back in like 2020 and 2021 when we would get, you know, kicked off for saying, and so, you know, you have to be so careful with your language. And so anytime trans activists would comment I just be like block I I have no interest in in engaging with you well and because they'll report you like if yeah. you don't block them all then they start reporting all your tweets and then you would get kicked off yeah you know? and I was really protective of my Twitter account because it was my only avenue to have a voice of what was going on um like just I, both in general but also in what was happening to me so I was, I was super careful um I'm not anymore now it's just like they're men they're men all over the place but I don't really care as much anymore because I know that Elon is out back a little bit more Thank than they God. used. Yeah. Um, but so I mm -hmm. had blocked him, not knowing it was him, but he was just someone who had been blocked by me. Um, at some, well, the only reason I actually know the date, <laughs> the date that I blocked him is because he tweeted about it. It was on the third of February, mm -hmm. twenty twenty-one. He says Sal Grover of Giggle has blocked me. Well, okay, so so I have I assume that's the correct date if he's telling the truth, and so, um, yeah, so I've had him blocked since early 2021, so long before all of this drama started, a year before this drama started, but throughout all of this, um, he has had posted screenshots of tweets of mine and generally just mocked me. He doesn't like sort of he's not like, you know, overly. Um, not like, you know, really, really malicious or anything, but it is psychologically horrible that this person is watching me from behind a block and then sporadically commenting, like taking screenshots of stuff I say. And it's not even just like of my original tweets. It can be of replies, um, of my likes, like just watching everything I do online. And I'm like, and this is why women need and female only online space to get away from this kind of very, very horrible behavior. So in 2022, so he got kicked off in 2022, he filed a complaint with the Australian Human Rights Commission complaining, he was accusing you of gender discrimination. This is so interesting to me because this is exactly the situation that we're in or, you know, about to be in in Canada. Like we're about to be all harassed endlessly by these human rights complaints from trans activists essentially accusing us of hate crimes and hate speech for things that we say things that we say online uh, you know what you know discrimination in terms of any female only space 
And, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm not glad that you're having to do this because I know that it's horrible and exhausting. And I know that you're also having to fundraise like hundreds of thousands of dollars to pay for all this. Um, but I'm in some ways glad that it's happening because I want something to happen to show people, you know, that they can't get away with this and maybe to return some of our rights and protections well, it's just like it's happening because there's so many people that don't believe that stuff is that you know that it's happening and i'm going but but it is it's happening to me um and even like you know just sort of the you know the concept of this like live stream of like where are all the women i will say it's really important to say is that you know tickle big giggle is the what is a, the first major proper what is a woman case yeah. Um, you know, the likes of it's not like the likes of like matt walsh have gone oh look the women doing the actual work Let's give them a platform and a shout out. Like, if you, here we are, honey. Have you heard from him? I reached out to Matt Walsh just as before the um, that documentary was released, which I enjoyed the documentary for what it was. Like, you know, I did too. They've all got like some little criticisms of it, especially the ending. But like, he, he highlighted the stupidity of these people, but brilliantly. It's fantastic. Yeah, I thought it was smart and funny for the most part. Yeah, and I reached out to him and was like, can we have a chat? Um, like, and this is, I, at the time, I was, was I, it might have even just been AHRC time. I hadn't even gone to federal court yet. I can't remember. But um, he had said, yep, like, we'll have a chat. And then um, he has never responded to me again. Yeah, but he has gone after me a few times for being a feminist. <laughs> 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 Fuck you. Oh, really? I know. Yeah. Yeah, just some cheap shots. And you're like, dude, you don't even know, like we can't all go and make documentaries. Some of us actually have to go to court and work out the law and actually do something. Like He, he has lost nothing. He has only gained from this issue. He has gained it. financially. Yeah. He has gained so much fame. And yeah, yeah he, he has, you know, this has been a boon to him where women are losing their livelihoods being threatened with rape and murder, you know, be silent. So that's why we know that everyone in society knows who a man is and who a woman is. Like, and don't, I'm, I'm a huge fan of some of the men who are speaking up about this. Like, I love the trigonometry guys. There's lots yeah, of Jordan yeah, Peterson too. content that I really right. appreciate. Not all of it. There's some. Brendan O'Neill's um, been supportive oh, for many, absolutely. many years. Rogan supportive. Like, oh, Michael oh, Schellenberger oh, is supportive. Totally, but all of these men are building these Glenner. amazing platforms and brands and followings and podcasts and and yeah making obscene amounts of money and we women are just like having to run on near empty and people then ask where we are and it's like because even like all of the guys who are building these big platforms we've got to wait until they let up like the, that they'll even have us on to speak to it's just it's just crazy to me. Like the, the, I, it's so sexist this society at the moment. On top of everything else, yeah, it drives me insane. Like this exact thing that you're talking about. I mean, that's obviously what we named our stream after. Where are all the women? Because of the kinds of things that the Matt Walsh types of the world were saying, which, you know, yeah. these men would pop up and sometimes women too, and being like, "Where are all the feminists? Like, why aren't women fighting this?" And it's like it just makes you want to scream because, yes. and I remember like, I was so angry and this is not normal. I'm not a very emotional person. I'm usually pretty level, but I was so angry that I started crying. Cause I was just like, we've been just fighting and fighting and fighting and fighting this for so many years by ourselves with no fucking money, like no fucking no. money. Like we can't even put on our own events. Cause it's like, we don't have money to like rent a venue or especially to get a venue that won't pull out last minute and cancel on us. And if something happens to us, how do we defend ourselves? And I, you know, there have been people who are supportive in a legal sense, you know, like the democracy fund and the justice center here in Canada. I don't want to say no one has been supportive, but it's like, yeah. you know, when we've been doing this on our own and suffering and suffering while these guys build their platforms and make a ton of money and get rich off of this or wait around until now when it's safe. And it's like, I'm going to start a podcast to address this <laughs> gender identity craziness somebody has to do it <laughs> um, like i had to raise five hundred thousand dollars in a year which is more than most people earn in a year i had to raise that in a year it is practically a full-time job of which i don't get paid for 
Like, I don't get paid for any of this. I'm happy right. for my to get paid. They are brilliant and this is their expertise and they should. I don't think I could ever ask women to go and fight for women's rights and then they not get paid for their um, professionalism and expertise. I, I, I would feel like a hypocrite. But I, it was like, while all these guys were like out there earning half a million dollars, I'm like basically the in the equivalent of like holding a paper cup on the side of the road saying, men aren't women, give me money. So I could go and fight it in court where it needs to be fought. Like, mm -hmm. and all the likes of Matt, all these people, where are the women? Elevate us. We're all here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you like we don't have access to the platforms and the money to elevate yeah. ourselves. So, of course, you can't yeah. see us. We've been blacklisted by the media. Completely. I mean, I've, I've sent the, um, the Tickle V Giggle media release um, to the Daily Wire. Never heard from them. No. I just and put everyone who's in the who's watching on YouTube. I just put the crowdfunder link in the live chat. It's also down in the show notes, but it's also it's gigglecrowdfund.com if you wish to donate. And it's also the thing of like I'm willing to go and talk to those sort of people, even knowing that in doing so I will be called alt right mm -hmm. and far right and just right general right wing and all of those sort of things they try and slur us with. I'm even willing to look past that. Because I, my theory is, is I would talk to the devil himself if it got my message out to an audience. Like I wouldn't, I'm not going to go and repeat what they say. I'm going to say what I say. And so like even women, when we, these places that are building these big platforms, we still have to like do this, like, you know, balance in our head and try and work out like, oh, is it worth it? Am I going to get you know, attacked for doing this, blah, blah, blah. But all we're doing is telling the truth. It makes it easier in a lot of ways to defend yourself and to speak about these things. You know, there's all these people who like are tripping over themselves, trying to get the language right. And like, who's her and who's he and who's trans and who's, you know, and it's like, you can just say her and him when appropriate and man and women when appropriate. And like, it's way less compl complicated. You don't need to think about it. You don't mess it up all the time as you know, they, I, I think the, the council for Roxy tickle couldn't even get it straight. <laughs> um, and I think in, was it in, in court, they were asking you to call him Ms. Did that happen? I don't know how much I'm allowed to talk about it, but um, I mean, it's 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 on in, in terms of being out there in tweets and public knowledge. So I suppose I can re repeat that. I was just asked, um, would I call him Ms. Tickle? And I said, no. Right. And so, yeah. So like you said, this is the case internationally that, that will decide what is a woman. This is, well, this is. It, it, it's international because of CEDAW. So CEDAW is the um, Convention of the Elimination of Discrimination of Women. That's the short version. It's got a longer name, which does not spell CEDAW, but like for sake of argument, that's what it is. It is effectively an international bill of rights for women. And it was created in 1979. Hmm. Um, and it's kind of, you know, like in that sort of like late seventies, early eighties with a lot of the stuff where women were starting to get laws in our, favor or that acknowledged us that it was maternity leave and and whatnot um it was because of that it's got 189 signatories around the world it's a un convention so um australia signed it in 1983 and then most basically like especially with how our law works because i know there are some countries that are signatories but they haven't done anything with it like they haven't incorporated it into law or ratified it in any way the UK has ratified it, Canada has, New Zealand has incorporated it into law a lot. It's it's in Canadian law. Um, there's parts of CEDAW is in there, like for your protections of, of women, it's just um, to what extent. But because it, they're all signatories, they do actually, so they can't be in breach of it. Like that's why you have these conventions, these international conventions to sort of hopefully keep everybody on track. And the only countries that haven't signed CEDAW are the ones you'd fully expect to have not signed it. Um, the ones where like women literally have no rights. Ironically, they know what women are in those countries. Um, but so, yeah, that's why, like, so in Australia, our Sex Discrimination Act is essentially just CEDAW. 
we incorporated CEDAW straight into Sex Discrimination Act. We signed CEDAW, uh, sorry, si yes, yeah, signed CEDAW in 1983, and then our Sex Discrimination Act is 1984. So that's how we enlivened it into Australian legislation. Um, and so we're in a really good position in that respect to defend CEDAW. What happened then is in nine, 2013, under the Julia Gillard government, who was our first female prime minister, and she's dined out on that fact for over 10 years. <laughs> um, she, her government brought in these amendments that put gender identity into it. And so they, they took out, um, I, was, this, I was corrected on this the other day, so I've always been saying that they took out the definition of sex. They did not. Sex was not defined in there, but because <laughs> no one had to, we just knew what it was. But they did take out the definitions of man and woman. So man and woman was in the Sex Discrimination mm -hmm. Act as um, they were actually a little bit wrong. Like the the definition for woman was like an um, a f adult. A f I think it was like a female of any age or an adult female of any age. And you're like, oh, that's, mm -hmm. yeah, it wasn't completely clear. But anyway, it was a lot clearer than what it is now because they took out the definition of man and woman. And they put in gender identity and they gave the definition they have for gender identity is basically gender identities, gender identity, something, something mannerisms. Like it just, it makes zero sense. It's just a circle of nothingness. Um, and they, so it muddled the whole thing. There was someone like really, an Australian who's very prominent in, in the know on all of these issues. She'd said to me, this is in 2022, she was like, it just it's never been challenged in law of like what happens. No one's challenged it yet of like, is it gender identity? Is it is it biological sex? Like, where does this all fit now? She's like, so someone has it has to be challenged and it won't hold up under scrutiny. So that's always sort of given me an optimism that maybe isn't warranted. Maybe it's just we're so far gone now. Who knows? But anyway, basically. Because our Sex Discrimination Act has become so muddled because of gender identity being put in it into the Sex Discrimination Act, and they're now basically saying this argument of, well, sex can be changed, sex is not binary, this is the Australian Human Rights Commission's position and interpretation of the law. And basically they're saying sex is what's ever, whatever is written on your birth certificate. So this is how they're trying to incorporate mm. the concept of legal sex, which legal sex is just gender identity. Mm -hmm. So if sex is just a legal concept like what does that even mean in society this is what i was saying like how law is supposed to reflect society and work in society but you don't make decisions in your everyday life that are sex-based decisions of which we all make you know it can be you know who are we going to marry and spend our life with that is a sex-based decision because sexual orientation is sex based like these major decisions? We don't make them on the basis of legal sex, and then so then on the next layer, it's it's the female sports, it's the female spaces, um, like gay male spaces, lesbian spaces. These these are all based on biological sex, and it's biological sex that is what is the most prominent and relevant in society. And so, just to have to try and just ignore that i just think is i think is stupid I, it's not sustainable it's just w whether it falls now or if it falls eventually it will eventually fall because it's just not sustainable what are they going to do like charge um like millions of people with gender identity discrimination for just acknowledging what they see with their own eyes no yeah i mean it's it's there's no need for and this is what i said from the beginning in terms of this legislation like you know when they were when they first presented bill c-16 in canada and i was like this will nullify women's rights i mean what's what what's the point of rights and protections for women if it's not about females like yeah. because theoretically then i guess we could just decide we don't feel like women anymore and we feel like men and i guess then we don't need these rights and protections and then of course on the other oh. end of things it's like well i feel like a woman so now i am a woman and then what you know all of these rights and protections exist because we're female and because we have certain you know biological realities as a result including vulnerability to violence and rape and things like that including you know 
being able to get pregnant, including menstruation and, you know, other, yeah. I'm sure many other things I'm forgetting, but like, it just doesn't make any sense anymore. And, you know, sometimes it's like, well, is it the whole point? <laughs> Well, that's like my whole thing with the yeah. Sex Discrimination Act. Obviously, the intention of it was biological sex because it's not like in 1984 they went and said to a bunch of women, just go, like, here's here's the Sex Discrimination Act, go and identify as men. No, it was all right. on the basis of sex. Right. So they've always known this. The only reason that it has changed to incorporate some version of legal sex, it's because of the men who claim to be women. Because one of the things that I have discovered in this process of learning about how it all is, is that females who believe themselves to be men, so have bought into gender ideology, blah, 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 they rely on their sex-based rights. That's how they play sport. A lot of them, because they're pre-whatever, they still, a lot of them use female-only spaces, they go and get pregnant, all of these crazy things that are completely sex-based, they rely on their sex-based rights. Sort of like the non-binary and the neo-gender crowd. The, what, the world can't possibly cater to them on the basis of gender identity. It's like you can have it because you find all for freedom of belief, believe whatever nonsense you want about yourself. But in terms of your rights, they are sex-based when you need to have those appropriate rights. There's just no other way to do it because you're not having like cloud gender Olympics, like, mm -hmm. not like the, in the category for sport, but like you're going to have to be male or female in that context. So the only people who actually completely benefit from either the concept of legal sex or gender identity superseding biological sex in law are men claiming to be women because they get all of these privileges that literally no one else in society gets while calling themselves the most marginalized. It's okay. gaslighting on a scale I've never, I, I couldn't even comprehend this level of gaslighting. I want to read just some of these tweets that I saw since I think maybe you're not allowed to talk about what actually happened in court. So I'm just going to read some that I saw online that I thought were kind of crazy. One of which was during the cross-examination. Uh, uh, I suppose this would have been the lawyer for Roxy Tickle. I put it to you that a person can shop in the women's section of the store, take hormones to grow breasts, go by a female name, have vaginoplasty and labiaplasty, and you still do not think that person is a woman, do you? And you said no. I'll answer for you. <laughs> <laughs> like, how dare you? This person went to all this trouble. <laughs> The thing is, though, it's this is the whole thing that, you know, you've been saying, everyone's been saying this. We don't know anything about anyone. The only thing you can tell when you first see someone is their biological sex. It's actually the only thing we can know with certainty because you can't guess or like you can't you can't always tell accurately someone's that you don't know like that what their political affiliations are or like their religious stance or like even like their like, um, you know, like their economic stands because, you know, like really wealthy people can make themselves look poor and poor people can, you know, dress themselves up. Like you just, you just don't really know anything about anyone. We can deceive them. Age can be really deceptive. Like there's so many variables where you're just like, we're sort of guessing a lot. Sex is the one thing we're not guessing about. Mm -hmm. It's the one thing that's what's so unique about it. It's just like, if you see a male, you see a male. It's like, it, you, I can't help it that my brain sees a male. And the thing is, it's not like I'm sitting here going, but my brain sees a male, but in reality, that person's female. And I'm like, oh gosh, what am I going to see? It's like, no, my brain sees a male and they're male. Like it's, it, that's what I'm saying. it's just the truth. Right. It's just human instinct and the truth. It's just reality doing its thing. It's like, that's why I'm like, no matter what happens in courts, anything, like, it, it's just reality is just going to continue. It's not like we're going to get a verdict from this and suddenly human beings can change sex. No, no, no. <laughs> reality will continue as it is. And the reality is that men can't accidentally get pregnant. No. No. And the reality is that biological males are, are astronomically more violent than biological females. Mm -hmm. And that is why we need separate spaces from them. And that piece gets ignored from the conversation. Like men, men in particular often don't like to don't like it when women discuss that that we are um you know we live our lives negotiating with a world full of male violence 
And sometimes we want to space away from that. Yeah, I did a tweet about this yesterday, actually, because there was that um, tweet that went viral of the woman who um, was, she was sitting, she was the only one on the bus and the man came and sat right next to her on the bus. And she took I didn't like a, see that. No. Yeah, oh, no, she sort of took a photo, like she took this sort of sneaky photo. And she was like, just basically like, men don't do this. And I was like, yeah, this is the thing. It is actually really stressful being a woman, like how we, when you're just existing yeah. in the world, we navigate through it and then have to, on top of it, try and not let it get to us. Mm -hmm while we do everything else and not let it define us and blah, blah, blah. We're constantly navigating all of these crazy things. And don't get me wrong, I'm sure there's lots of things that men are navigating that we have no concept of. Mm -hmm. That's because we don't know what it's like to be men and they don't know what it's like to be us. And so when then we've got these men that are just, you know, desperate and, and abusing us to get into our spaces, not only are you taking our rights away, but you're taking away the one refuge that we have where we can go in there and relax, yeah. where you don't have to be on guard. It's just, and, and, and it's all that's happened from gender ideology is it's made all of these spaces more important. Right. And, and women do behave differently in female only yeah. spaces. Absolutely. We put our guard down. We, we behave very differently. And men who want to violate women's boundaries want, like they, they, they have this imperative, this like drive to, to get in there and see what's happening. But so often I think when I'm dealing with this issue in my head of the ancient wisdom in the romance languages that used to drive me nuts as a feminist teenager of why, if there's only one man, why is it, why is it Aeos? Why is it male? If there's, if it's all women, but there's one man in there, we have to use the male to describe the group. But that's true. There's ancient wisdom in there. If there's one male in there, it's, it's male space now. Oh, completely. It's like why you, if you let one man in, you may as well let them all in. It's not a female only space anymore. And yeah. even on like a digital one, as I was saying before, like we live so much of our lives in the online now. And so we have to be able to, um, and we are, there's so many different ways we're creating the real world and the online world just in general, but female only spaces are one of them because like online misogyny is insane not to say that there aren't you know especially like gay men who are experiencing a lot of homophobia and there's some like you know just like you know, straight what, what are they called like cis -het, white cis -het, whatever it is <laughs> not saying that they don't also have issues but we're just talking about this specific issue and our solution to it like you guys go and solve your problems over there it's oh i just think it's okay to go and have your refuge like if you take something like Twitter X, whatever it's called, like, and that being like the town square, it's like, okay, but you still need places in the, t off the town square where people can go and like rejuvenate before they go back into it. Like on Giggle, what was really nice in the like female only like Twitter style thing that we had is that women would be really honest about um, stuff that they wanted to talk about or opinions or working out different theories because, like, there wasn't some man to come in and mansplain. There were really great political conversations there unlike any I'd ever seen before or been part of because we weren't, there was no, like, well, actually. It was everyone just actually having the confidence to say not just what they thought but what they felt. And there was, like, just seeing how, like, women, what women's solutions are to, like, global problems. I, it was an environment I'd not experienced. I thought it was so cool. Like the night that the war broke out in Ukraine, that was one of the most interesting nights on Giggle because when all of the women were talking about it and it was totally different to what the conversations on Twitter were like. There's a woman coming at this with complete, like, you know, just that sort of, so like sort of empathy and compassion and not wanting more and just looking at problems in a completely different way that we're not that accustomed to hearing because we do live in like a very male centric world still. Mm -hmm. And essentially probably always will. Like we just have to work out how, you know, all the different ways around that, but that's just how it is. And I'm so glad you mentioned that. It's something that I notice every time I'm in female only space, the, the group genius that arises when women are discussing things is one of the most exciting and <laughs> mentally exhilarating things that I, I ever experience. And women, are suppressed even even in in mixed groups of the not disguise you don't see that female genius arising and you know that that group energy is incredible have you heard and this is my, my, i'm going to send my daughter to a female only school if they still exist hopefully they do 
because of this. Apparently, girls who go to female-only schools, when they get older, they are much more confident, like, in work situations, just normal social situations, mm -hmm. just in their opinion, because they haven't been scared or, you know, the boys laugh at, you know, those awkward teenage years and blah, blah, blah. There's a confidence that they get. And the, the girlfriends that I have that went to female-only schools, they definitely have that. And I, I've said to my mom recently, I said, like, I wish that I'd gone to a female-only school because it took me a long time to develop the confidence that I have now with stating my opinion. It did not come naturally to me. And it wasn't even something I was taught in school. It was, it was developed as an adult. Yeah, I remember my my mother was my, she went back to university when I was a teenager, maybe, you know, around when I was 13 or something like that. To, and she went into education. Um, and when I was a kid, she would talk to, you know, like, I think like one of the earliest points where I remember sort of learning about feminism and recognizing sexism and things like that was in terms of classroom dynamics, because my mother would talk to me about that. And she did tell me about there's that, like, this was, you know, in the nineties, right. That mm -hmm. there had been studies done that showed that girls who went to female only schools did come out, you know, more confident of themselves and less like, oh, sorry, maybe, uh, I don't know, right? And, you know, because, and I recognized all, like, you can see that the boys would speak up and they would dominate conversations and they would interrupt more often than the girls would and the girls would kind of politely wait around. Um, and, you know, that's why I interrupt so much now as an adult. <laughs> that's why I'm so rude. <laughs> And I'm fighting the patriarchy. Like, I just think that, like, you know, there's so many, you know, we, we have to all exist, like, you know, basically in this, like, unisex world together. And that's fantastic. It's not like I want, like, a female-only world. No. It's, I'm right. just saying we just have these little spaces carved out for us. And I think, like, male-only spaces are a slightly different question. Well, I'm all for them for socialization and recreation. The only reason I go, like, there is a next level to that discussion is because um, they, they seem to pretty quickly become places that, that male-only places, they, they, they breed sort of extremism. It doesn't happen for women. Like, the incel stuff, that comes from male-only environments on, online obviously sure. right so i'm I mean, like okay I, I i'm just there's it's men and women are different so male only spaces are therefore really different to female only spaces and so they're a different problem that i don't know any like much about them or the solutions for them because you know it's just not my business but yeah i do have a moment's pause i'm like oh it's they can be a bit scary with the extremism that does arise yeah, I mean, I, I support men having their own spaces and women yeah, having their own spaces. I mean, yeah, I, I, of course, historically, the problem with male-only spaces were that they were places of, like, you know, financial and political mm -hmm. power that women weren't yes. allowed into so they couldn't get into, you know, medical school or politics or whatever intentionally. And, you know, and it's funny because you can see, like, Twitter operating in that way a little bit in the way that, like, men's ideas and opinions are amplified because men i'm not saying this to insult men i don't like i don't know that they're doing it on purpose i don't think that they are but men like to listen to men more than they like to listen to women like they like to listen to each other talk more than they like to listen to women talk and they're more interested in each other's ideas and they sort of automatically assume that men's ideas i think are smarter than women's ideas this is the impression i get because you can see like yeah. elon musk even for example amplifying men's voices and he almost never 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 amplifies women's voices and even when it comes to this gender identity thing like the men that he thinks are like oh this is genius like i think he shared that video of that teacher who was asking questions to his students who had accused jk rowling of being transphobic and he was like okay yeah. okay and it was a decent video um you know like he was yeah. posing good questions to make these students think tr critically about what they were saying but he was asking you know like okay let's back up a bit like what did she say that's transphobic why is this transphobic but it's like this is amazing and genius and i've never seen him do that around women and i see a lot of these guys in the manosphere the bro podcast sphere whatever doing the exact same thing and interviewing each other about like women and how women act and what women think and i'm like this isn't how women act or think why don't you ask me <laughs> why do you ask like a woman there will be like yeah, they, they, they'll elevate these like videos of guys and again yes it's a they, they're good videos they're good but i'm like yeah. they they are no better than anything helen joyce has ever said 
you know, totally. And she's been doing it for like eight years. <laughs> it's like, yeah. I just, yeah. there's better stuff out there. The, on the gender ideology mm -hmm. issue, I will say this, women are better voices on this because we're talking about oh, yeah. the one thing we are experts on over the over men, women. <laughs> right. You know, it's like even like that that video that you referenced around the bus like it's like I stopped taking the bus to work like when I was still you know working a normal receptionist job. I mean I worked as a receptionist all through my university degrees or whatever to pay my way through but like I would take the bus back and forth twice a day if not three or four times a day downtown my house downtown back and I stopped taking the bus because it became so stressful and just walked it was like an hour walk and you know I like walking whatever catch up yeah. on my podcast but I still do like walk through the downtown east side I still do walk through the dangerous areas but walking through the dangerous areas was less stressful than being trapped on the bus because of these things like just like a man standing you're sitting here and there's a man standing which with his crotch intentionally way too close to his face a man like they're just like drunk guys high guys like talking to you hitting on you starting to get violent spitting on you or come and sit too close to you and put their hand so that it's touching your leg like it's fucking stressful just being on the bus just trying to get to work yeah. and i again like i know that men have all sorts of other stressors and dangers in their lives i'm not saying they don't, but that's an experience that's specific to female that I don't think that men really realize or understand. Completely. The fact that we can just quite easily be killed for no other reason than when we are a woman, mm -hmm. that is something, I mean, it happens every day all around the world. So we just can't, the data is in on this. It, it's happening. It yeah. just happened yesterday in Australia. There was a man who's just killed what but he's he i don't know if you heard about it, he went into a shopping center in sydney and he killed with a 30 centimeter hunting knife um he killed um five women and a male security guard died trying to protect one of the women um then 12 were injured eight of them women the four men were injured again protecting the women so like some men have been affected mm -hmm. but men went in to target women mm -hmm. but it's not a hate crime it's you know, we're the only group where if we are specifically targeted for our immutable characteristics, we it's not a hate crime. And I have an issue with the concept of hate crime and hate speech, but I do feel like if you look at hate crime legislation, it's uh, glaringly misogynist. <laughs> like we, women are targeted for their sex all the time. Yeah, no, completely. And it, it was, it's been quite surreal in the last few days in Australia, like having this horrible a, a tragic attack like it really I was really upset on on Saturday and Sunday and my legal team was as well because you know we'd just been in court all last week on the what is a woman what is a woman and then only to come out and you've got this situation where this you know predatory deranged evil man has walked into a public space and identified who the women are he didn't ask them their pronouns um, or their identity, he just saw that they are adult human females. And I don't want to live in a world where only predators have the right to identify who a woman is and the rest of us get punished for it. Well, and I think I just saw it like to the point around the hate crime legislation. I think I just saw that in Scotland, they said that that men would be included in the new misogyny hate crime legislation, you know, because men yeah. might, actually sure. harassed on the street okay. because they might be mistaken for women and that's misogyny so it counts he he also the first minister of scotland actually said that a man might rape a trans woman and never know that that <laughs> is a trans woman i never know <laughs> would never know that it's not a woman I've had sex with a woman before like what are you talking about like this this is not possible. This does and not I, happen. No. And but even like even if they this this man, I mean, obviously, if the guy had a dick, then you'd know. But like, even if he'd had the vaginoplasty or whatever you want to call it, where the man gets the transgenital surgery, it's like you would it. still know. Like it's nothing like a vagina. No, it's it's literally you would know. Like the fact that what, he, oh, it's just another hole. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Sorry to be so vulgar, YouTube. <laughs> this is literally not possible. Like, it's like when people go, you know, there's some some men who claim to be women really pass. No, they don't. There literally is not one. They, they, it, this does not exist. 
we are we are male or female in every part of our body just this is just this is not an issue no one passes and men think men think some of the men pass that like men think that um mm -hmm. what is his name blair white thank you yeah they're like but yeah. blair white obviously is a her yeah yeah well, because see, yeah blair white has done youtube videos where he's actually out in the street and asking people can you tell and like i think it was like like basically like eight out of ten were like yeah, right. In like out in the wild, in person, you can tell. Yeah, well, and women he, and women and children can tell, and because yeah. innately, instinctively, we have to be able to tell. Is yeah, it's in our it's it. Um, it was so important to the survival of our species that we can clock a male, yeah. and and it's not important for women. Like if they accidentally fuck Blair White, like it's not, they're not going to die. Like it's. Now you're gay. But are you? Yeah. You'll live, but now you're gay. But even like, so like, you know, you're midwife. Like, I'm actually just getting texts from my phone now. My sister-in-law is pregnant, right? And we're all very, very excited. Um, she's only 11 weeks pregnant. She had the nip test last week and we're just planning the family dinner tomorrow night because they're going to reveal if it's a boy or a girl to us. They know the sex of the baby now at 11 weeks gestation, which I've got a few issues with, because I just don't know how that's going to go for little baby fetuses or like baby girl fetuses all around the world. I think yeah, we should tell maybe, me about it. maybe not know this early, but this is where technology has gotten us now. You can find out at 10 and 11 weeks gestation. Mm -hmm. And so this is part of my thing in this whole tickle V giggle thing where I've got to sit there and listen to lived experience or whatnot. During the AHRC complaint, I I found out that I was having a girl. I found out at 20 weeks. So my, I was like, it was not a sign of birth. It was observed in utero 20, well, actually 22 weeks before she was born because or well, 21 weeks because she stayed in there longer than she was welcome. Um, and then and then now, like I, this is, this is the, the NIP test happened last week while I was in federal court. Again, my lived experience, since now someone else, another woman is finding out the sex of the baby, not assigned at birth. Yeah. I'm just like, we are, we are all having what is actually the real experience. And it is completely the antithesis of what all of these organizations and governments and whatnot is telling us. This is just all nonsense. It's complete all nonsense. nonsense. And even, you know, coming from the world of home birth where some women don't want any of the testing, Nobody needs to tell you if your baby's male or female at birth. Women, women are perfectly capable of figuring out if they just had a boy or a girl. There, it, there's absolutely no need for a medical provider to to explain that to a mother. No, like remember when my daughter was born? Like, yeah, there was no no one assigned anything. It was just like, I mean, she's like a so you're waiting around to doctor, doctor, what is what? It? <laughs> like just nothing. I just Final sex, please. <laughs> How will we ever know? And that's one of the things that just it does get to me sometimes where I just go like, you know, we're supposed to, we're being told to be kind, to respect the apparent lived experience of these people when our lived experience of reality is being completely ignored. And like, you know, and just this thing of like living as a woman, like, you know what? Cutting off your dick is living as a man. Yes. <laughs> oh, men can do that. Yeah. <laughs> like, I don't know any women have ever cut their dicks off. No, this is nothing women have to do. <laughs> no. It's living as a man. So I just, I feel like <laughs> it's just everything about this stupid ideology is so wrong. And just how on earth did we get to this point where it has infected all of our governments and institutions? My only yeah. theory is that there's a lot of men out there who I don't think they give a shit about trans rights. I think that they really, really love women having no rights. Yeah, they do. And, you know, even like the, like kind of, you know, I, I constantly am getting comments from men in my, like on YouTube or in various places online of men, even like men who are like opposed to the trans gender identity nonsense, but they're like, you deserve this. <laughs> like they're just so stoked because they're so, 
angry at women's advancements and feminism and some of that may be justified. I mean, I've, I have anger at feminism in various ways as well, but you know, like I think there are a lot of men who are like, yeah, screw you. Take that. Like like pushing you back. You've gone too far and now we're rolling all of this back. Yeah. I get it a lot. I get men being like, this is just payback for women. (coughs) Pardon me. Taking over men's spaces. And I'm like, Oh yeah. Women were right to take like to, put ourselves in boardrooms and governments because that is part of the unisex nature of society. But I'm yeah. like, if you want your male only spaces for recreation and socialization and privacy and dignity, go and create more, like fucking yeah. stay in them for all I care. Like if, if the worst of the art, like the biggest argument or fear you have against creating them is oh, some feminists might be mad at me. I'm like, do you think men being mad at me for creating a female only space stopped me? No, I'm like, grow some goals and go and create a male-only space. Right. Yeah, I remember I was at that, I think I talked to you about this, Mary Lou, I was at this free speech event in Toronto in November and that Bruce Parody lawyer, his, his talk was kind of laughing and gloating at what was happening to women now because they all took over men's spaces and now look at what's happening to you you silly idiots and I was like this is not the same thing and how could you possibly think that this was like women's women only spaces are to protect us from rape and murder and violence it's not just for like (laughs) having like a fun time or like networking so that we can make more money or like gain political power or yeah unlike incels we're not it's it's not even like to plan a plan ways to hurt men like it's it's just it's just to have a break from all of it on Google women would talk about astrology but that's what's going on (laughs) we're not sitting there danger we're like sitting there talking about like some of the stupid shit so we like some women like I'm not a fan of astrology, but like some women like it and that's fine. But they get mocked by so many guys and like, oh, a place where I can go and talk about like this frivolous, fun, superficial thing without, you know, someone telling me that I'm hot, like I'm ridiculous or whatever. Like, why can't you just indulge fun things like that? I think that that's great. And if there are men that want to go and have male only spaces to do their cute little things too, do it. Just like, like stop fighting about it. Stop complaining about it. Yeah. Like well, I do like that what comes from this is that we that that's the other side of the mountain here as we get to that nice sort of level place. And there there are online spaces in the 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 internet anglosphere that are for femme people, right? That they're they're like, yeah, they, there are places that are inclusive to these autogynophiles and to the other men who All want to say them. women. But yeah. and, and that are supposedly female only. Like there are femme only spaces. There's where, lesbian dating apps that are yeah. open to men. Right. Uh. But they don't want that. They don't they want to violate women's boundaries. In the same way that there were multiple um, women's music festivals that allowed men in dresses to come. And, but they wanted to destroy the Michigan Women's Music Festival because it was for women born only yeah. women. And, and that they, they had to destroy it. They could not stand it that there was a boundary there, even though the Ohio Lesbian Women's uh, Music Festival let, let men in dresses come. The, there was another one in the, in the Southeast that let men come. And they don't want to go there. They don't show up there. They only want to come when they're, they're not invited. I had this epiphany recently that with creating an a fem- online female-only space, I had unknowingly put myself in a position of power where I could remove men safely. They couldn't do anything to me physically. They can attack me. And in real life, female only spaces, if we see a man in one, we remove ourselves. We're petrified and we get the fuck out of there as quickly as possible. I had flipped the power structure. That's why they hated me. Right. Right. I um, want to get to, there's just, there's a couple questions in the chat and then a couple questions from Patreon that I want to get to um, before we need to get out of here, if that's okay. Um, so trans local, I'm not sure if you can answer this question. If you can't, that's fine. Trans local asks, um, what do you think are the chances this will end up in the high court? I can only speculate and I think that I think there's a pretty high chance because I think either side would take it. I mean, I definitely would. I'm if I have to. So and I assume the other side would too. So I think it's a pretty high chance. 
Um, Geek Girl had said earlier, I'm not sure if this was resolved or not, but she just wanted me to let you know that the, because I posted the link to your crowdfunder a couple times and it wasn't working on her phone. So um, I don't know. If was, she just wanted me to let you know, and that's in the super chat, but um, hopefully that's figured it out. I know that it works on my browser because I just tested it again. Um, and on Patreon, uh, Zero Switch had asked, um, Curious to know how the response to this case has been for you from Australian media from and from anyone else, the government, TRAs, women's groups, average people. What has the response been like? Oh, the, I mean, last week was like overwhelming with how awesome the response was. It just so many more people became aware of the issue and, and on like our side of it, like came like, you know, agreeing with us. So that was really cool. In the lead up, the, like the last two years, trying to get the Australian media to bring attention to it has been like trying to get water out of stone. It's been, mm. and I mean, I mean, that's why I went to the UK. Basically, I was like, I had, I'd contacted a few UK places to see like, please, can you please give me attention. I need to bring attention to this case. And they were like, oh, well, if you're over here, yeah, we'll have you on, but you've got to be here. And I was like, why am I going to the UK? And then I went, oh, well, actually, why not? And actually, just quickly on like that, like podcast bros and all the guys getting attention for this. There was one guy where I was meant like DMing with him, and he was like, "What do you mean you flew yourself over?" He's like, "I would not get on a plane unless the media place paid for it." I'm like, "I'm sorry, what?" I'm like, "That is just not even offered to us. I didn't even know that that." Was I wouldn't it. have either, but I said that recently because that whatever podcast has invited yeah, yeah, yeah. me on, and I'm like, "I'll try to figure it out." Like, I'm presuming you're gonna pay my way, and they were like, "Oh no, no, no!" And I was like, "Oh, okay, it's just an online thing." And they're like, "Oh no, no, in person." And I was like, "I'm not." gonna pay my flight first of all i can't afford to but even if i could afford to like in principle no you pay this is how this works like i wouldn't right. go do they they but that's also why we can't do that much stuff because it's like exactly. we can't pay our way to just go over yeah. to freaking london to yeah, exactly like it was a huge get on thing tv over there and i was just like and i was just sitting there i was like what do you mean? Uh, and the like, key he, is not from London, but he goes on media stuff there all the time. He's like, yeah, they, they pay me. And I'm like, but who even are you? I was like, this is just so insane to me. But, um, but you know, that's my little rant about that. Just for irks me. Um, yeah. I, I mean, I've not earned any money from any of this. Like some of the trolls are always like, you know, they like with everyone, they see, you know, they're getting paid money from like the far right or conservative. Blah, blah, blah. I'm like, I wish I would yeah, take it. Yeah. Like, I do yeah. from anybody. Yeah, it is. Right. I'll spend it. If there's no strings it. attached. Yeah. <laughs> as long as I can use it to get women's rights back, like, I don't care where it right. comes from. Um, but yeah, so in terms of, we had lots of, like, the support has been awesome. Like, I, I like, incredibly grateful for it. I think even, like, the media was in Australia, like, they did report on it last week. They were reasonably fair other than um, the ABC, which is, like, our state broadcaster. They did, they deleted it, but they did one tweet alleging that I had been harassing um, the applicant for two years. And I'm like, no, no. <laughs> that hasn't happened. Um, but they deleted that tweet pretty quickly. Um, so, yeah. I saw something in The Guardian that kind of accused you of harassing. Okay, so it was like The Guardian reported Grover has more than 90,000 followers on X, formerly Twitter, and has given up to 50 media interviews in which she has persistently misgendered Tickle, the court <laughs> heard. Her legal costs are in part funded by the sale of merchandise that is demeaning to tickle. So I think maybe that's what they mean by all this harassment is you're well, refusing I, to call him a woman and then you're, you're demeaning merchandise. What, what is your demeaning merchandise? I, I have no demeaning merchandise. I don't even know if I'm allowed to talk about it. Um, go to no self ID on Twitter and you can find out all about that. Um, it's not me it actually pretty much has nothing to do with me, but it's a very, very funny story. Um, but I, I will say this, if he had not taken me to court, I would have no reason to speak about him. I'm talking about the court case. <laughs> I, I don't know this person. Last week was the first time I've ever been in a room with him. I've not actually officially met him. I Go and live your life. I wish you well. I, I, if you want to call yourself a woman in your life, I don't care. I just care that you're making me and, by extension, everyone else believe it. It's just 
I, I, I wish you well. I, I don't know how much more I can say this. It's just, if the Tickle v. Giggle case did not exist, I, I would have no knowledge that this person even existed. So, like, yeah, it's like, yeah, the case was allowed to go ahead because it was deemed in the public interest. So have I spoken about it? Yeah. Do they now want to punish me for speaking about a case that's in the public interest and the crux of the case is the fact that I know he's a man? Yeah. Is that absurd? Yes. Like, but he shops in the women's section. <laughs> um, George on Patreon asks if if Saul wins and is and sex is reinstated in Australian law, will she go back to creating her app and retire from the gender wars, as, or does she see herself doing more activism internationally? Um, so, I mean, I want to be running a female-only space, I and mean, that's like how I got into this and, and has been like my foundation of it the whole way through. Um, yeah, so basically when we win in, but let's just say the high court for sake of argument of like that that's probably where it will end up. Um, yeah, like I would female in this space. Like there's no reality where I'm creating a space or running a space that men are on. <laughs> it's just, that's not gonna happen because I just won't have it. Um, and that would be, I just, that's just, so I just won't stop until I can. But even once, um, say like, say we win in the high court and so then it's resolved in that sense in Australia, I would still, like, I'm not going to just go and abandon women all around the world. And then in terms of in the future, like there's so many other issues. Like one of the issues just for, for us, we need to work on, I think, is um, listening to women. <laughs> like, I think that would be really cool. I think we need a little bit of a movement of like, can we please be listened to? Because if you'd listen to us, like if they'd listened to Jermaine Greer 30 years ago, we might not be here. So, mm -hmm. Um, and then, but then also, you know what, like, I really want little girls in Afghanistan to be able to go to school. So I think there's so many different mm -hmm. just issues for women in the world in general that I'm not going to just stop now and, and just go and like, not care. Like, I'm not here just for myself. You know what I mean? It's just like, we're all in this together. And I couldn't sleep at night knowing that, you know, just abandoning women. No, I, I couldn't do it now. Um, there was a question, uh, this is sort of a bit off topic, so I'm not sure if maybe Mary Lou will have something to say about this, but um, Mirwar's Jumeau says, is the spread of social contagions crazes among young women a manifestation of something like that group genius Mary Lou described? I do want to question this group genius theory because I don't know <laughs> that when women get together, they come up with genius ideas anymore. <laughs> too for her, to be honest but i think i do think that like i think there's an assumption among men that what they're talking about is really rational and smart and they doubt themselves less than than women do and you know maybe i think women are more free to um to brainstorm and to um to express themselves and let their thoughts come out in a group of a female in a female only space. And that um, like, that's what I'm talking about. Like that, I don't think there's only group genius in a group of women. I think that group genius is, I mean, that's like a Jungian term that is um, oh, okay. that that's um, the group together has an intelligence that it transcends any of the in, in individuals. It's a, um, a gestalt term as well that the, the, um, the whole is greater than the sum of its parts, right? So what I'm saying is when you're in a group of people and you, um, we've all experienced like brainstorm genius, right? Where like trying to come up with something, trying to come up with something, people are popcorning, people are throwing out their ideas and suddenly like the ah of, arrives of the, the perfect answer and it really evolved out of the group. It was no one individual person that created that. That's what I mean by group genius. And I think that female genius can be different than mixed group genius, you know? I think that when women are together, um, I love what arises. I love, I love female problem solving. I love when, when women get together and talk about politics, how it's a very different um, analysis than in a mixed group for me mm -hmm. in particular. And I'm, I'm not saying only women have this, this phenomenon. Like these are all old, um, kind of pre 
reductionist psychiatric terms, like the old like Jungian Gestalt terms of like the 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 intelligence of the group is bigger than the intelligence of of each individual in the group, right? So that's what I'm saying in terms of like social contagion. Yeah, that absolutely happens among women, and um, and I think you know to backtrack in our conversation, we have to acknowledge that that women did play a big role in pushing this insanity through especially leftist institutions and especially the, the uh, uh, women's organizations, you know, like yeah, women, I, mean, I watched it in midwifery. I couldn't even believe how, how crazy these women were and how brainwashed by this, what they were. Um, so I don't want to say only men have, have pushed this through as well. So I don't think that was a genius moving through them. I don't think that was. <laughs> I will say like I'm angry as well, that women have fallen for this and pushed pushed it through, but two things on that one. Such a betrayal. Mm -hmm. but, but, but it's it, women, It's not unusual for women to work against like their own self-interest. Like there were women who were against women getting the right to vote. It's like we, the women still fought for it. And then, you know, the ancestors of those women have welcomed the vote in their life. But also, um, you know, while women have pushed it, yes. And that it makes me very angry. There is no issue without men claiming to be women. So if it was just a bunch of women saying, oh, we totally accept men who claim to be women in our spaces, but there were no men doing it, then you just have a bunch of women saying stuff that you would be like, you sound delusional. It still comes back to the men claiming to be women. Yes. And so, yes, some women have fallen for it and pushed it. And and especially when it comes to the kids stuff, they should be held responsible for that. Like, I think anybody who has encouraged the, the oh, like these surgeries and the hormones and what on kids belongs in prison. And we see so many mothers doing that. Unfortunately, yeah. it's horrific. Yeah. yeah, but it's Munchausen's by proxy, which is absolutely, quite, which is fem like the, if that if that condition affects females more than males. So of course, yes, it would. absolutely, it all comes absolutely, back to a based reality. So it's like when, it's not like we're sitting here and like our fight for it being like women are perfect. No, women are flawed as well. It's just that the flaws are very, very different, <laughs> and none of this negates the need for female women's focus. No, I have never ever in my life worried that I was going to be raped by a woman. Yeah. <laughs> it's never like I, I remember being in my early twenties and ordering a pizza and the pizza delivery guy coming and trying to like get into my apartment. And, and just thinking like, like there's nowhere I'm safe from this. Like I worry about it when I'm in the parking garage, I worry about it when I'm on the bus. Now I got to yeah. worry about it when I order a freaking pizza that yeah. some dude's going to attack me. When we're sleeping. Right. I don't worry about it with if a female UPS driver, I'll let you know what she can use my bathroom. She I'll give her a glass of water. Like I, I'm not worried about the female UPS driver, but the male UPS driver better stay out of my house because totally. we have to assume that that we're all men are potentially a risk. Oh, totally. Like, I remember when I, when I was living in New York, you know, if you're getting on the train like late-ish at night, and, like, say if you're the only one standing there and then they'd be, like, you, they'd, you'd see another woman and you'd both get into the same carriage. Yes. Like, yeah. But if there was you and a man saying that you would get into a different carriage to him, like just how it is, we have all these little things. But because anytime, like if I'm in a situation like that, you know, if you're walking down a street and you're like, oh, the moment you see another woman walking by herself, you feel that little bit safer because you're like, okay, she's there. And then she probably couldn't do anything to help you, but you're like, there's another woman here. I feel safer than, I mean, it's, it, this is just like, a, it's such a natural reaction. I don't have control over it. Mm -hmm. Um, let's do one last question before we log off. ML asks, what will happen to Giggle if we lose? Um, okay, so there's a few um, there's a few different sort of options. I will say this. Th there is no reality where, where I'm creating a space that men are welcome on. Th th there's just none. In terms of being able to have a female-only space, um, like I'll, I'll have the app, there's, there's, there's other options that I want to sort of go into them yet um it would be very much though that um you know australia wouldn't be able to have one so the fight here would very much not be over and so you'd still be fighting um well, it's just the you know you, that's sort of like a loss in the high court situation which where you just go australia's highest court would go oh no there's no such thing as a woman just that it's, it's a reality that's too depressing to bear that I actually, yeah, I don't think of it that way. I always think of like high court, no, 
like if that's where it ends up, we'll that's all be victorious. I'm, I have like this like horrible like optimism that I just always am like, oh, it'll work out eventually. Like we'll get you've got to fight, you've got to put in the effort, but we'll get there. Um, so I suppose if it's not the high court, then it's really having to try and find the legislators who will um, actually do something. There's just no political appetite in Australia, or very little political appetite for this issue. Um, mm. Like I, I, I would say that Australia is more captured than Canada because at least in Canada there is a political opposition emerging. Mm -hmm. That's just not happening here. In Australia, they're like doubling down on so many things. It's like they're just going, we're just going to try and see this this world's stupidest experiment through to its final conclusion. Like, it, I don't know what their goal is other than like completely like just eradicating the concept of woman from, you know, society and the, you know, being any way um, attached to femaleness. But no, I mean, like when the WPATH stuff all came out, like OzPath was like, no, 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 no like doubling down, doubling down. If the cast report, everyone here is like, no, 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 no. Like somehow like the children here are different. No, they aren't. Like it's all the same. So no, it's, it's a horrible place to be in this respect. It's so captured. Um, do you have anything else you want to add, Mary Lou, before we log off or ask? No, it's just uh, thank you so much for what you're doing. You really are like a... Yeah, a superhero. And I, I'm so sorry you ended up in this position, but it Never couldn't have fault. been. I just feel like from my perspective, it, it couldn't have been a better woman who ended up in, in this position. You have been stellar. Thank you. Thank you. I, it just comes back. To, I just know I'm telling the truth. It's really easy to be consistent. It's really easy to know what your position is. It's just all I'm saying is men are not women. That's it. There's no, um, there's, there's no like group genius happening here. It's just men. <laughs> <laughs> We've got it. We've got it. women are adult human females. <laughs> Only men have dicks. <laughs> Only men can cut their dicks off. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank so, you so much for having me. Yeah. Thank you for joining us. We were so excited that you could come on. And yeah, you're doing amazing. And I'm sure you know, you see it online, like how much support you have all yeah, around the world. And, you know, and how ridiculous this case looks to the world. I mean, I'm sure you're peaking thousands of people as you go. I don't think I have to do that much. Yeah. <laughs> Um, okay, so again, for those watching, you can donate to support Sal's case at gigglecrowdfund.com. I'll put that in the live chat again. And uh, she's on Twitter at Sal Tweets. And Mary Lou Singleton is at ML underscore Singleton. <laughs> and on Substack at Mary Lou Singleton. Um, I've been putting the audio up on the podcast on my sub stack and i'm also starting to put it up on spotify actually so that you all can listen to it on the apps i am doing minimal editing because i don't have time to do a whole bunch of stuff so it's just the audio i get stuck in trying to clean it up and then i'm like no just leave it um but it's there so that people can listen after the fact on on their favorite podcasting apps and, and things like that. This is again, where are all the women? We're here every Wednesday night at 6 p.m. Pacific and 9 p.m. Eastern. Um, and like and subscribe. Thanks for tuning in. Thank you, Mary Lou. Thank you, Sal. It was great to see you. You look great. Yeah. Despite your exhaustion. You've got well, a good tan. <laughs> of like what whiskey and vapes and uh, <laughs> last week I ate nothing but macaroni and cheese all last week that was it it's all I could stomach I love it yeah well, I and hope you and cheese that's awesome. yeah I hope that's you amazing. get some space to nurture yourself and get some rest mm -hmm. and thank you thank you on behalf of all women thank you for doing thank this you so, so much thank you okay bye bye everyone